welcome back okay now we're going to try and bind the signatures together using the kettle stitch I've got about a two foot long piece of well I used embroidery thread um, two strands you can use linen thread wax thread whatever you want but just make sure it's something fairly strong and as you can see here I'm just weaving it through the holes as if I'm sewing. You get to the end and then you make your way back again. In and out, in and out. So every hole is being gone through twice. Make sure you pull your thread Kind of firmly you don't want any loose stitches here you, you don't want it so tight that you're going to rip the paper but you don't want loose stitches because that means the whole binding of your book is going to be loose and floppy See? just taut now I'm just gonna work a knot here to secure it and then send it back through the hole again start on the second signature. It gets a little bit fiddly as you go on but it's definitely manageable. Now I'm going to, with this video, I'm going to include links to the videos and the tutorials that I learnt this method of and they'll probably do a much better job of demonstrating how to do this than I did. In fact I'll do both the long stitch method and the kettle stitch binding methods just so you can see the difference for yourself and they are pretty simple once you know how It's all about hooking your thread around the stitches in the previous row before you send it back through the hole again. And it doesn't matter if you run out of thread because you can stop and start as many times as you want. You also don't need to worry about leaving long ends or tidying up your ends when you're doing this stage because it will take care of those later. So I've pretty much come to the end of my thread here so I will need to tie it off. And let's get a new one started in a moment. want to make sure your knots are good and secure. You don't want to leave any of your knots inside the signatures. On the spine is okay, but not inside the signatures. There's a clever way to tie a knot on the end of your thread. If you want to learn more about how to do it, this is one way I learned on a quilting show on TV. And it's dead simple. If you want to learn how to do it properly, just comment in below this video and I will do a demonstration, a proper demonstration explaining how it's done. I'm just going to 
pass the needle between the strands at the end of the new thread just to secure it in place and then I can get back to stitch binding open enough. Through there we go. And just like that we're off sewing again. Now you see here I'm trying to get the needle around underneath the last stitch. No, oh, not get the right hole. There's better. Nothing worse than poking it in the wrong hole. Sometimes it was a bit fiddly trying to get it to the needle to pop out in just the right place. Oh, very nearly, very nearly. You can do it. Keep going. Hey, there's a girl. Back through there again. And that's all of them sewn together. So the central ones are really nice and neat. The end ones are not quite so neat, but it's all holding together. And then I throw it back into the book press again. Got to make sure the spine is nice and straight and flat. Really, really important at this stage. And now we're going to coat it with PVA glue. Now it looks like I'm not using much and I'm putting it on pretty lightly but I'm actually putting it on pretty thick. We're making a really good coat. We're not only pasting down the ends of the threads and so they won't be flopping around loose anywhere but also I'm making sure that the ends of the spines are getting a coating. It's to make them stronger, it's to help them stick together and it also helps to keep the book flexible when you open it. You see me doing one layer here but I've actually ended up doing two good coats coming on really quite thick. Once that was dry, I decided to add a bookmark. So I found this little organza ribbon. It's a, it doesn't show up very well on screen, but it's a lovely pinky mauve colour. And I decided I was going to put a little metal charm on the end of it, a little fish. Because it's organza and you get all those fine fibres, I decided to paint a little PVA on it just to give it a bit of strength and hold it together. And then, because I want to stick the fish to it, and I want to make sure it's going to stick, I added a dab of tacky glue. That dries clear, so once it's all dry, we won't see it at all. It's about this point I started to realise that doing this on paper, it'll probably stick to the paper. So I transferred it over to dry on some non-stick baking paper. And I can tell you now that was a very wise move because it didn't stick to the baking paper. 
and left that to dry. So once the spine was all dry on the book and the bookmark glue was dry, I added more PVA to the top inch or so of the spine. As you can see, there's the bookmark. This is where I'm going to attach it to the book. Oops. It's a little bit fiddly getting it just right. But once I've got the position right, you can press it into the glue. Just to make sure it's going to stick. And get that loose thread down into the glue as well. I don't want to leave any edges that are going to fray. 